I need to make a seating chart for the guests coming to my brother's wedding. And of course, I want it to look special, something a professional wedding decorator would show up with. But on a budget, I'm Anna. I'm not a professional decorator, but my soon-to-be sister-in-law seems to trust me enough for the job. So keep watching to see if I can pull it off. These are my inspiration. I just love this idea. I've been hitting up thrift stores looking for the right picture frames, and here's my collection. I wasn't too worried about color because anything that doesn't match, I'm just gonna spray paint. And I'll make any excuse to spray paint. First thing I need to do is lay them out in a pattern that I think is gonna work the best, and then I need to number them and take a picture so I can remember how to put it back into that pattern. After that, I'm going to spray paint any that are not gold, some color gold. I don't want them all to match. I want there to be some variation. So let's start organizing these in some kind of pattern. I have 15 frames right now, but I'll see if I need more. Hopefully not. Hopefully 15 is it, but this is something you can add on to. Actually, I have 16. I have 16 picture frames so far. If I need more, I'll have to add them on the sides. I'm going to be using two different colors of gold spray paint, and this one doesn't have a built-in primer, so I will be priming these frames first. This is the gold that I'm gonna use on the rest of the picture frames. It has a bit of a, like it says it's a hammered finish. So not only are these gonna have a different color, they're also gonna have a different texture to them, which I think is kind of cool. But before I spray this on, I'm also going to prime these. It doesn't say I need to, but also doesn't say I don't need to. So I'm just gonna prime. It's time to attach the frames together. Now I want the backs to be flat so I don't have to worry about like the fronts lining them up. I'm just gonna glue them and have them just laying on a table. I am going to glue them two at a time, just nicely against each other. And I'm gonna, it's gonna be kind of like roughly in the middle. The reason I'm saying roughly is because I'm not gonna measure and mark them all. I'm just gonna guess where, just kind of line them up nicely in the middle of each other. And I'm going to be gluing two to each other at a time. And then when I have like, two, then I can do four and then add a little more. But I'm gonna do two to like let them sit overnight or maybe even longer, just so the glue really bonds. I'm using a mix of hot glue, cause that's immediate bond. And then E6000, because this is like the forever in the world bond. So the hot glue will act kind of like a nail, just kind of hold it while this is curing. And then that will be a really strong hold, but I still don't trust any of that. So I'm still going to add even more support on the back. I'm going to be cutting little strips of like strapping and I'm going to strap them all together. So gluing time. Okay. How about a time lapse of this? Cause this is 16 frames. Yeah, that's a lot. Okay. I've cut myself some one inch little supports. They're really just a paint stir stick that I cut up, but I'm now going to glue them with wood glue across the back. I think I'm gonna do two per seam or two per join. Hope that this really reinforces it. I mean, it seems pretty strong already, but uh, I just wanna be super sure. Super sure, not super sure. But so just a little bit of gluing and praying and finger crossing that it um, all holds well together. But it should, right? I did get the best tip to put Vaseline on my E6000 and I tried it. Oh my gosh, worked out so good. Yeah. See, that's why I love when you guys leave me comments. They're so good. So I have good news and bad news. Good news is, my little supports here, oh, they definitely make this sturdy. So I that's 
excellent. Bad news, my going like halfway for each frame didn't really work out. Some of my frames kind of don't attach. Like, let me just show you this, this one right here. So this is a, the top and then this is below and there's just a gap right there. So uh, it wasn't supposed to be like that. I guess I just assumed they're all the same size even though I knew they weren't. I don't know. Okay, you know me and measuring, it just doesn't happen, whatever. So I do have a solution. I'm just going to paint extra support sticks in black and glue them behind so hopefully nobody notices. Hmm, Cause it's kind of like a dark corner when you come in. So that's my plan. I'm just gonna paint my way out of the situation, but that's just the way it is. Too bad for me, hoo hoo. Um, I should measure more often or think that measuring is important, but I don't. So I'm just gonna start gluing four together because like I got two, I'm gonna attach four. This is like the only one that fits and it, okay, it doesn't fit, it like barely fits, but it's what I'm gonna do and it'll be great and it'll be lovely and nobody will know except for whoever watches this video. So don't tell people, okay? And I'm just gonna start gluing. Thankfully, I played Tetris a lot as a child or teenager or adult. That's just thankfully I played it a lot because I managed to fit most of the pieces together by kind of just moving them around except for these two spots right here at the bottom. Those will need supports. Or if I flip it, then it'll be at the top. But either way, only two spots need support. And I just have to leave it like this while I'm gluing it so I don't mess it up. Oh, it's gonna be a total disaster, but let's go, let's have some fun and glue stuff together. It's just two days until the wedding and the seating chart is Finally done. I do have the names, like all the names, I have them printed out by my Cricut and I just have to insert them. That's the only thing I need to do. It was a struggle, it really. I mean, it really was a struggle to get to this point. There are so many things I learned and would do differently if I was ever making one of these again. But before we get to that, let me show you how Ralph made the easel that's supporting the frames. To create a simple easel for Anna, this is the wood that I used. Two pieces of leftover trim and three strips of one by two lumber. I started by cutting the trim pieces to 26 inches in length and the 1x2s to 3 feet in length. I used the trim pieces to create a front support ledge for the easel, using a little glue and some brad nails to keep it together. But I made a small miscalculations with the ledge, which I'll explain later. I wanted to create a broad area at the top of the easel's two front legs so that I could place a hinge for the third back leg. The 1x2s were glued together and I nailed a small piece of wood to help keep them joined while the glue set. I overlooked the screw placement of the hinge, so I discovered that one of the screws would fall at the joint of the two easel legs. This not being ideal, I decided to use a thin sheet of wood to cover this top area and make things a bit more secure. With the ledge, what I didn't consider was the thickness of the frames that Anna was using. I needed more space between the frame legs and a support ledge since the photo frames were one inch thick. I ended up having to cut some more wood to create some standoffs for the support ledge and give me the space required for the photo frames. These 
These are some leftover chains from some dollar store baskets that Anna had purchased during the summer. With some simple wire bending, I connected two together and attached them from the third leg of the easel to the front support ledge. Now I did this because I needed to prevent the entire easel from opening too wide and having the whole thing collapse. So I've sanded, like not like amazing sanding, but just so like there's not like huge pieces of wood sticking out. So I've sanded and I've stained this. So now I can move on. I only have like one little like detail I want to add. I just want to add a little bit of gold to this trim piece down here just to I don't know, make it look a little more wedding-ish. But before I do that, I just want to quickly go over the cost of what it take, took us to make this. So we used two one by twos, and those came out to $4.64 Canadian before tax. And then the little hinge at the top, that was $2.41, and then with tax ends up being $2.72. So not, not a huge cost there. And then this chain is actually from like another... I don't even know what we bought. It could have been like hanging baskets from the dollar store. So this was like a leftover, but we'll say that was like a dollar fifty. And then this piece of decorative wood was scraps that my mom had. So I don't even know, like, like if you, I guess if you bought some decorative wood, whatever that would cost you. And then we had like an extra piece back here. So like really inexpensive to make an easel. And then the stain I just happen to have, it's the same one that I've been using, which I'm actually gonna use on an armoire that's sitting right there that I've sanded and I'm so excited to start on. But the other thing that I spent money on was the rub and buff, but I didn't spend money on for this project. I've used this so many different times. So that's really the cost, like 241, 464, like that. And then, I don't know, leftovers. So I think that's a pretty good way of getting an easel. And of course, I have Handy Ralph to build it. So now, a little bit of rub and buff. I have two different gold colors. I don't know if I'll mix them. I don't know which one's gonna look better. That's just what I'm gonna do. It's a fun thing to do in the morning. So once the guests have found their names on my frame seating chart, they need to find the table and the tables need to be numbered. So I'm gonna make my own little table numbers. So I pick these up at the Dollar Tree and then I pick these up at Dollarama and I'm just going to drill a hole and glue this in and I'm gonna have a little stand and I'm gonna put numbers on both sides using some vinyl and I'm gonna cut it out with my Cricut. But the first thing I need to do is remove all the stickers and give everything just a little like a light coating of that stain that I've been using on everything. It's called weathered oak. I just want everything to have kind of the same feel to it. My brother called it our branding. So we have um, like the same font, we're using the same colors, we're using the same everything because that's our branding for the wedding. Just making everything match. I just think it's kind of cute that he said that. My little signs are stained and dry so I can add the numbers, which I cut out using my Cricut on some heat transfer vinyl. So I just have to iron them on and make sure I don't mix up my numbers. This HVT is cold peel, so I have to wait till it completely cools off to peel it off. Look how cute that's gonna look. The numbers are all on, so now I just have to attach the bases.
But what did I learn from making this? Okay, number one, don't use more than 12 frames. Originally I had 16 and then that was just too big and unwieldy. It was just too much. And thankfully, partway through while I was making this, my brother changed the amount of tables, which saved my behind and I could go down to 12. So yes, don't go more than 12. Number two, if you could use just wooden frames and glue them together with wood glue, I really think that would make your life easier. Number three, don't glue the frames together the way I did. I went row by row and that was, that was a disaster. Don't do that. What I would recommend is start with your first one and kind of do it like a puzzle. Lay out all your pieces, start with this one, glue the side and glue the bottom. Then move on to your next piece. I'll do this one and glue the side and the bottom and then the next one. And that way you're just gonna continue going until you've completed the whole puzzle. And that's why I recommended using the wood glue. It'll give you just enough wiggle room, like it won't set so quick, but it'll grab on, like there's enough tack to it that'll grab on that you'll be able to just kind of wiggle your pieces to fit a lot better than I did. And lastly, number four, and this one is a bit of a toughie. If at all, you can get, like, get to assembly with all the names already in, so you have everything, just your names in, the table numbers, and you have it all like closed up, the backing on, if you can start assembling when that's all done, it'll just make things smoother, I think. Like right now, I have to take off the backing, take out this little white backer here that I have, and then I have to put all the names in. And I was just putting these backings in and like the, the sign that says, find your seat. And I felt like I was gonna break off one of the frames. So it would just be like, like just, it'll calm your nerves if everything is already done. But of course, if the bride and groom don't have their seat seating arrangement already done, you won't be able to do that, but it would make your life easier. Like I said earlier, the wedding is in two days and yes, I'm completely ready. All the decor is done, my dress is ready, hair and makeup are booked, Ralph's wearing a bow tie because bow ties are cool and so is he. And actually, so are you for watching all the way to the end of this video. Much appreciated. Share this video with anyone getting married that you think would like this idea and I'll see you soon with another project. Bye! just a tiny little extra step. So prime time, ha ah, prime time. I'm so, f oh gosh, I just think I'm so punny. Okay, time for me to do prime time. I have big fuzzy slippers on, cause it's cold. I don't know, for some reason, if my ankles get cold, all of me is cold. Like I was wearing like short socks. No, no, I need like serious socks. And it's October. Man, imagine me in like January. Full body suit of wool. Okay. <laughs>